In this Caring for Caregivers conversation, I'm in Spokane to talk with Jennifer Likorobic. Jennifer is the Director of Case Management for Aging and Long-Term Care of Eastern Washington. Her office serves as the local area agency on aging for Spokane County, as well as Ferry, Stevens, Ponderé, and Whitman counties. The AAAs provide a wide range of practical help for caregivers, and in Jennifer's case, she's responsible for diverse geographies from the very urban to the very rural. We sat down to talk about the special challenges of serving older adults in rural areas, resources for family caregivers, and much more. Here's my conversation with Jennifer. Jennifer, thanks for joining us today. It's so great to be here. Um, We're here in Spokane. Um, I love being here. It is going to be a hot day, but I'm so glad we could have this conversation. Will you tell folks a little bit about yourself and what you do? I am a case management director for Aging and Long-Term Care of Eastern Washington, and we are the area agency on aging for our area, which covers uh, Spokane County, Ferry, Stevens, Whitman, and Ponderé counties. And we serve older adults and those with disabilities, and we provide a lot of services uh, for our communities, but we also contract out for services, things like home delivered meals, minor home repair, uh, personal care services, lots of different programs and services that we offer uh, the community around here. Tell us a little bit about why you got into the field of aging or long-term care. Yeah. Well, I actually grew up in a small community 20 minutes south of Spokane in Cheney, Washington, and I went to college there. And then after college, I got into, actually, my first job was working with developmentally disabled adults. And I was basically a caregiver for them, helping them live independently in their home. And that really gave me an amazing taste of what it's like to be a caregiver, to really be um, making sure that individuals are safe in their homes and and meeting all of their needs and medical and social needs. So after that, I realized I wanted to do something more behind the scenes, more to really help people. And so I thankfully got the job at Aging and Long-Term Care uh, as a case manager. And I've been there 26 years now, worked my way up to case management director and It's just my passion is helping people Mm. and being able to see people live and um, grow in their community, um, be healthier, um, safer, um, get the needs met in their home is is really what I love about it. We love meeting people like you who are really dedicated to helping others. Um, And you're doing this work out here in eastern Washington. Will you tell us a little bit more about the communities and the people that you serve? Mm -hmm. Well, Spokane here is pretty urban, you know, this Spokane city area, but you drive, you know, um, 20 minutes away, like down south into Cheney area, into the wheat fields, into the Palouse. The cities are really separated out. There's only small little pockets of communities that, you know, farming communities that live out there. Um, and, And then the smaller like Pullman, Washington. And then when you go back uh, north ways, you have Colville and um, Republic. And our service area covers basically all the way to the Canadian border. Oh, wow. And then all the way down to Pullman. So there's so many small little towns and communities uh, where families are living and growing and trying to um, maintain their um, standard of living out there. And lots of families uh, providing care for their families also. So we, we try to serve them with the programs that we have um, and keeping them safe in their home. So that's a large area that you cover. Right. Can you talk about what what's special about working in rural areas and what are some of the challenges? Mm-hmm. Well, I think, you know, there's so many communities that are very connected. They, you know, everyone knows everyone. <laughs> everyone um, knows the, the local doctors, the pharmacists, the grocery store clerks. They know, um, you know, the first responders might be their neighbors. They can go to people and and connect with people and get, you know, they can talk to somebody else who knows somebody else who can help support them in their in their community. Um, You know, if if someone needs help with something, they can go to a local church or, you know, something like that. A lot of the communities have food banks and food pantries so that families can help their elders um, to get the services that they need. Then on the other hand, there's communities that aren't connected, that um, they don't have the services and supports that they really need, and they end up having to come to the larger communities 
to get help. Um, so transportation is a real challenge because you live um, up in Republic, Washington, you know, which is about three hours away, um, and you need your doctors are here in Spokane, or your doctors are in Colville, which is two hours away. And so families are having to transport their family to get there to doctor's appointments and um, get treatments and uh get groceries and things like that. And that's a challenge. Will you tell us a little bit more about um, who your case managers are serving? Definitely. The clients that are on our in-home care, the Medicaid program, are 18 years and older. They have disabilities, um, chronic conditions. They have, um, you know, dementia, diabetes, all of those kind of things that they're living with. They're trying to live in their own homes. They want to remain living in their own homes. And a lot of them want to have their family by them. A lot of them often um, have family paid caregivers, which is a really nice thing for them to be able to have their family um, be their paid caregiver. And then there's also those that have caregivers from home care agencies that uh, we contract with that come into the home and do their their scheduled hours. Um, the case managers do the assessment eligibility for that, but then they also help them with things like helping them get home delivered meals set up, the um, personal emergency response buttons, they help them find housing. We have co contracted um, community choice guides that come in and are able to help us do all of the work to do the applications and help find housing. Um, so we have a lot of programs and different providers that we can pull in to help us. And do they also help with things like utilities, getting utility assistance or Definitely. broadband? Definitely, they can, um, energy assistance programs, they can help apply for all of those kind of things and low income telephone um, accounts and things like that, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about some of the more rural communities that you serve. And what are some of the, are, are there challenges like broadband that would help mm -hmm. in the caregiving journey? Definitely. You know, everything seems to require the internet. <laughs> you know, you have to, if you need to apply for something, you need to do it online. And so the struggle that there in the communities in, you know, up north, everywhere around here is, is the internet access, the cost of it. Um, you know, our clients aren't always able to afford internet. They also don't have the skills to use a computer. I mean, that's what we're seeing. And so I think the challenge is there that also brings the family back in to try to help. Um, you know, the family will need to come in and help sit down and fill out that application online or um, to get online to pay a bill or something like that. Do you also work with the tribes out here? We do. We have uh, definitely tribal members that live in our area. There, there are um, some... The Colville uh, Area Agency on Aging is nearby our area. Um, but yes, we definitely have good connections with the tribes in our area, Spokane and Kalispell. Well, and I think one of the other challenges that we're noticing, at least in the data around the state, is that especially in some of our more rural communities, um, the population is aging. Yes. And we definitely. see a lot of uh, young people trying to yes. move to urban areas. Definitely, definitely. And isn't it um, interesting that the population is aging and then the family caregivers are um, maybe not as much as they used to be either. And so I see that being a real burden on families to maybe take care of multiple family members. So they're the ones they're they're the ones that need to take care of mom and dad because the other siblings aren't able to help or they don't live in the area. Yeah, I have that situation um, myself that my husband's parents both live on the other side of the country. And um, so my sister-in-laws are really responsible for helping them because they live close to them. So it's hard for us being so far away, um, not being able to go over and help when we can. Yeah, I think um, my sister also lives really far away. Mm -hmm. And so while I'm the closest one who can be there to help support my parents. Um, my sister does what she can mm -hmm. from afar and she comes yeah. to visit and uh, and it's helpful that she can take help take care of like legal questions because mm. my sister is an attorney and that kind of thing. But that um, helps, definitely. Yeah, yeah. it is a challenge to mm -hmm. figure out so many different needs, mm -hmm. right, as people age. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And our aging, aging and long-term care of Eastern Washington, they have great resources. I think that's the best thing is they're in those communities with case managers and um, 
information and referral specialists that people can go to mm -hmm. to um, get the legal advice, to um, get you know uh, places where they can go get meals and um, resources and caregiver support programs. You mentioned earlier about the role of family caregivers. Can you talk a little bit more about what um, you provide case management services connecting people with more formal care? Yes. But there's there's also the need for family caregivers yes, too. Definitely, definitely, they are vital because the the paid caregivers they come in and they do their their work and then they leave, and the rest of the time, uh, you know, families needed to fill in those gaps, you know, to be there um, to take them to doctor's appointments, you know, on a personal level or visit with them and. Um, get them what they need financially also there's you know that con connection where family caregivers are needing to be responsible for making decisions um, power of attorney and you know health care and financial decisions um, every you know everyone needs to have if they're not able to make decisions for themselves to have someone to do that and oftentimes it's a family member so that puts a lot of pressure on the family to um, be there when they need to and, and help support when they can. And does your office provide support for family caregivers? We do have a family caregiver support program um, and there's lots of support groups and classes. Um, we definitely can refer, um, people call us, we can definitely refer them and they're all over in our five counties. So that's the nice thing, you know, up in Republic, they can call Rural Resources Community Action and um, be able to find out where their family caregiver program is. Let's talk about this new long-term care insurance program, Walk Cares. Can you tell us a little bit about Walk Cares? I see Walk Cares as an amazing benefit for us workers, Washington workers, when we get to a point where we can't work, we become injured or disabled or something happens to us and we can no longer, we can't work, um, we can't take care of ourselves, and we need financial support to heal from some disability or injury. And that have that benefit that we've been paying into to use if we needed it would absolutely offset the financial burden because we can't take care of our families if we're not able to take care of ourselves. And I know that the um, Walk Cares, as we fondly call it, mm -hmm. it, uh, it will help people purchase uh, things like ramps and right. help for home modifications. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I believe it's thirty five thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, it's the 36, lifetime benefit. Yeah, yeah. thirty thirty five thirty six thousand dollars. And you know, if you, I think what they've kind of figured out is, if you needed a caregiver, um, you could have ten hours a week for a two year period. That would be that would cover that amount to allow you to have someone coming in and taking care of you, um, and also. The program's going to allow family caregivers to be paid to take care of you. So it's going to remove some of that burden on the, our own families from taking care of needing to take care of us. Um, and it'll be a great. And then the equipment, for sure. Um, someone coming in and do housework. You know, someone to just uh, yeah, come in and do some grab bar installations to make sure our home is safe. Um, it's going to be a really great thing a couple of years here. Yeah. And one of the challenges um, that we're we're facing right now is that there's this initiative that seeks to undermine our long-term care pro program, the insurance program, mm -hmm. right? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, we can we can just try to do what we can to offer the resources and the supports, the programs. The um, we have all of those programs available, and you know we have. Um, great service providers in our areas that are able to provide them. So yeah. it'll be interesting. We have um, about 820,000 unpaid family caregivers across Washington. And one of the things that I think we are hearing is that those family caregivers really need some support because so oftentimes they're paying out of pocket uh, for those costs and they're spending on average about $7,000 a year right? Whether it's gas or buying food that we hear so often. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Purchasing clothes for their family members or absolutely. I see that happening with my own like sister-in-laws again. They're, they're buying and bringing things and, um, and providing that right out of their pocket. 
definitely. Yeah. Yeah, financial burden is very, very difficult for for families to be able to um, manage their own personal family situation and then also need to support their own loved ones. Too. Especially for people who are like working at the margins, right? Yes, and like absolutely. living paycheck to, but, but to paycheck. Yeah, and housing costs are, costs are, you know, increasing. We talked about transportation, gas prices. You know, the cost of gas is really hard. And so needing to, to get that transportation and make sure, you know, you have gas to get there um, to medical appointments is a definite challenge. For our folks in the audience, um, I just want them to understand that 20, 21, 24, the initiative increases costs, particularly for women who are the majority of caregivers and working families. That's great. So what would you say are the biggest differences between serving, say, Ferry or Ponderay versus uh, Spokane downtown? I think it's accessing the services, being able to to just, you know, go a few minutes down to the major, you know, grocery store to purchase the things is so much easier in this urban area. Uh, for those up, you know, in Republic, they have to drive several hours to get to, you know, a, a Costco or a major, you know, big box store to be able to get what they need. Um, they really do make do with, a, with what they have in their communities. I think a lot of folks move to the rural areas because they like the quiet. Mm, they like, yeah. you know, living out um, alone and doing their own thing, having their property. So some of them are like, let's just leave me, leave me alone. <laughs> um, but I, I think, you know, we want to, of course, uh, value their independence. If that's where they want to live, we want to help them live there as long as we, as they want to. Um, sometimes they're not safe there anymore. Mm. You know, they may think that it's okay to live in a home that maybe isn't very safe, um, but we, we try to help them understand that, um, that we can help them get some equipment, we can get, you know, a ramp um, that would be able to get them out safely. We can modify their bathroom to make their home safer to be able to stay there. Um, I think we live in a pretty special state because um, we've worked so much uh, in our long-term care system to support home and community-based services, which is sort of what I'm hearing is like that is in fact what people want to do, especially yes. in the rural communities yes. if they want to age in place with, and they we need to figure out how to get the supports and services to them. Mm -hmm. We've also really seen um, the need for more dementia care. Oh. And, you know, I was talking to some to a case manager the other day. Um, they're seeing some seniors with dementia with challenging behaviors that are um, there aren't any services and supports in the rural areas. You know, um, there aren't I think there are no um, at this point anyway, like facilities that would serve a, a person with dementia who isn't able to live safely in their home. And so I think that's a real challenge. They, they need to move down here to Spokane um, to be able to get into those facilities. And a lot of folks don't want to live in the urban area. So it's a it's a challenge, even with a state that ranks really high on long term care services and supports. We've we've got a ways to go, don't we? Definitely. But I think in line with the dementia, um, we have been doing a lot of work, at least at aging and long term care. And I think the other area agencies on aging also um, to try to provide training, um, you know, resources. We have a new program that is now providing training to first responders mm. on dementia. Oh, and so when first responders go out, um, they'll know how to help the, the senior um, who you know may not quite understand what they're saying. And so. And can family caregivers come to you too? Absolutely. Seeking for support? And you have training available yes. for folks Yeah, there's, a, well? I think, a class called Powerful Tools for Caregivers. There's quite a few training opportunities we can refer them to. That's great. Jennifer, for folks in Eastern Washington, where can they turn to for resources? Yes, our website is www.altcew.org. And for folks who are looking for more information or resources, you can go to our website, www.aarp.org slash caregiverswa. Jennifer, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate the conversation. It's been great. Thank you.